Hello, I'm Mr. B-Bates1, and welcome back to another episode of MC Map Faker. Now, if you're not familiar with the series, it all started out originally with this idea of creating a theme park with loads of mini games using nothing but command blocks and old fashioned block placing. The idea was that anyone on any device could come and build these mini games and have fun with their friends. Now, unfortunately, I couldn't keep up with the original format, so I rearranged it and changed it a bit and relaunched it, where I show you the games in action and then I show you how to build them. There are currently three mini games in this park there is the maze. Chicken Drop and Minecraft Roulette. Now today we're taking a look at the newest edition, Llama Racing. <coughs> now this Llama Racing game is a spin-off of an original game called Derby Racing. Here's an example of one at Blackpool Pleasure Beach in the United Kingdom. This was also adapted into board games so you could play it at home with your family. These are classic games and I really wanted to add something like this into my park. Now I actually want to build a proper horse racing track at some point in this park so in order to switch it up a bit uh, and not sort of keep the same theme, I decided to use llamas rather than horses. So that the game itself gives the same vibe of the original game, but it just looks a little bit different. So without further ado, it's tradition on this channel, let's take a look at it in action, and then let's see how it really works. And there we are. That is Llama Racing. Rather simple, rather basic, just a quick little game. You can actually come and bet and then just go off and play other games in the park as well and you'll still see the results come up down the bottom. Just a nice, quick and simple, easy way to win or lose tokens in the park. So now that you've seen it in action, let's take a look at how it was built. So here we are then, just underneath the terrain where Llama Racing is. Now some of these command blocks here are literally just to, for one-time setup. They're just to show you the commands that you need to use them and can be removed. But without the one-time setup stuff, there's only 59 command blocks here being used, three scoreboards, a couple of tags, and a clone command. It's really, really minimal. It's really, really basic in terms of the actual setup. It seems to be more difficult than what it is, but trust me, it is really, really easy to set up. Now, to start off with, you really need to build how you want it to look first, because ultimately, nothing is going to be in the way. So, what, as you can see here, I wanted to build this, like, wooden-type stand to it, uh, and I wanted to sort of keep the llamas under different layers so that players can see each llama moving across. So, I decided to build the look first and then do the commands afterwards. So, in this instance, I've got three rail tracks that go along and just this sort of wooden frame that goes around it. Now the main mechanism of this game is the mind carts on the rails of course. Now the, uh, what's happening underneath the carpets here, which is what you're not seeing, is that the, the rails are actually being swapped out based on a randomised number, uh, and those rails are powered rails that are getting placed in. And the more powered rails there are, the faster the llama gets to the end, which is what determines who the winner is. Now each cycle, the game randomises those tracks, uh, so there really is no way of knowing what the outcome is going to be, it really is simply a luck based game. Once your main llama track is built, you're going to need to build your bookies. And this is what I have here. The idea is, is that a player will come here, place their bet on which colour they want, green, red or blue, and then the results will be stored in a scoreboard. And then if that llama gets to the end first before the rest, you will win tokens. Now before we take a look at the bookie, let's take a look at the scoreboards that we need to set up. So we have a chain here, which is just a one-time setup chain. It's literally one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blocks. That's all you need to do. And essentially all they're doing is just setting up the individual scoreboards and adding a few entities to it. So the first two are simply setting up the necessary scoreboards. So the first one is the player choice. So this is the choice that's made through the bookie or the NPC in the bookie's office. And that's simply done by just using the objectives add. The second one being the race results. This is simply who it is that won. 
Now what I'm doing is I'm actually adding a dummy entity called winner, and I'm setting that value to zero to begin with. But what will happen is, is that whenever a llama gets to the end, that llama will update this value to whatever its corresponding number is. So blue is number one, red is number two, and green is number three. But in this instance, we just want to add the winner to the board to begin with, so we're setting it to zero. The next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to, want to add a tag to the llamas that are in the minecarts. So this scoreboard is used for the randomization of the tracks. We'll explain how this works in more detail in just a moment, but for now, we're simply just going to create that objective. Now that we've got our scoreboard for the llamas, we now need to just add those three llamas to that scoreboard, and what, which is what we're simply doing here, utilizing that tag that we added earlier. And finally, just to start the game off, we randomized a number between one and six. And I'll explain the reason why I'm using the numbers between one and six in just a moment. So with that all set up, that's the entire one-time setup. You don't need any of these now. The scoreboard should be in place. Your three llamas should be tagged and they should all have a randomized number assigned to them. So now we're back at the bookies then, let's take a look at what the buttons are on the bookies. Now for the buttons themselves, it is the same commands in each one, there's only a small minute difference, so I'm just gonna show you the one and explain what the changes are. So the first thing we're doing at the top is that we're testing to see whether or not the player has any tokens. If they have less than nine token, uh, 10 tokens, so it's nine or less I've got here, then it will tell them they don't have enough and it won't allow them to play. But if they do have, it will add a tag to the player this is to ensure then that any on-screen uh, text and stuff like that is displayed to the player. The second one is putting the choice. So this is the only difference between each three buttons. If the player clicks blue, the player choice is one. If the player clicks red, the player choice is two. And if it's green, the player choice is three. And then finally, it takes the actual tokens off of the player. And you just repeat those same commands for each button, simply just changing out the one for player choice. So to explain how this works properly, on the scoreboard LR Llama choice, what will happen is, is that every round, a randomized number between one and six will be picked for each llama. Depending on what number it is, will depend on what track will get cloned. Now, as you can see here, I've got one with one red stone rail, two red stone rails, three red stone rails, four uh, red stone rails, a powered rail, sorry, four powered rails, five powered rails, and six powered rails. The reason why I've got these torches here is because if they're not powered when you clone them, they don't always get powered unless the block gets updated. And as you can see here, the llama's moving up and down. And depending on the randomization that gets picked, depends on the number of rails that gets placed down. And it's quite simply, if you don't power them before placing them, they sometimes don't get powered and it will stop the llama. So which is why I've done this here. Now all these command blocks here, this is just for testing, so they're not actually part of the main game. It's just if I wanted to test which row, for sec say for example, I wanted to give green row the full power, I can just press this button here and it would do that for me. But for the only thing you actually need for the game will be the rails themselves. So as you can see here as an example, the clone command that we're using is simply cloning the track from here to here and then placing them up here. With a lot of these clone commands being uh, positional based and coordinate based, I know actually how much of a pain it can be. And there is actually something in Minecraft that actually helps with this. I, I don't know if you know, but I will mention it just in case. Now, if I actually go into my chat, you can see here that I've got a thing at the top that says my position and the coordinates. Now, this is actually built in. It's not an add-on add or a mod or anything like that. It is built into Minecraft. And that actually, it covers two things. It covers my position and it covers block position. Now, block position is based on what your cursor is pointing at. So you're probably thinking then, how do I enable that? But it's actually quite simple. If you go into the settings of your game, and then you go down to the creator option, there is actually an option here under creator settings that says enable copy coordinate UI. And what this will mean is, is that when you're in chat, it will actually bring it up here. So if you're trying to work out the coordinates, you can simply do this. And there's two here. There's one is copy and one is paste. So the first one here is copy. And when you click on it, you will get it saying the coordinate is copied. The second one is paste. So say, for example, I wanted to fill where this uh, cursor is pointing at the minute. I can simply click it and it will import it in to the chat for me. I don't have to write it out, which is very, very useful and very, very good. So with that in mind then, let's see how the game starts. So the first thing we have is these over here. Once you've picked your color with the uh, bookie upstairs, this here will display that choice. So it's just simply saying execute for any player who's got the tag LR play, who has a choice of two. And it simply says, you have picked the red, the race will begin shortly. And it uses this for red, blue, and green. So as you can see, this section here is always powered, and it's only when the game goes to start will it unpower it briefly, 
to complete the steps in the game, as you can see there. And then once those steps have completed, it will repower back up again. So the first sort of part of the game that gets triggered is this chain here. So the fir this first thing here is just simply setting it to air above. So when you place a redstone block here, it immediately disappears. There you go, as you can see there. This one here is setting the redstone block to power this. So the first thing we're going to do is we randomize those numbers again between 1 and 6. We want to do this every time the game starts to make sure that it's not the same numbers over and over again. The next string uh, of command blocks is simply setting redstone blocks for blue, green, and red. Now these are actually over here. And what these do is, so the first one here is simply setting it to air again so that it removes the redstone blocks afterwards. And then this one here is simply making use of the uh, scores parameter. And it's simply saying for each entity, so in this case is the blue one, so for the execute for the entity named Blue Llama, who has a score L choice of one, and it will clone the command blocks for number one. And it's basically the same command each time, but this time it's choice number two, and that will do two powered rails, Llama choice three. And it's simply just using that clone command and using the scoreboard to determine which one to clone. And there's the final six one. And you simply do the same for each color. So in this case, blue, red, and green. Once that's done, as you can see here, we've got a delay of 500 ticks. This is just to give players time to make their choice. Once it hits this, it will set this to air, removing this uh, action bar down at the bottom. And then it will display another one saying the race is about to begin. So the first thing we do is, is that we shift the bookie into the back room in the bookie's office because we don't want any more players to make a bet. The next thing we do is we enable the set of command blocks that is detecting the finish. Now we'll cover that in just a second, but it is essentially what this is over here. The next stage is to actually trigger the game. So with this, I'm using the action bar again to say that they are off. And that actual pop that you hear is a sound effect. It's actually just a firework blast. And that will play for any player with the tag. The last uh, sort of things to do here is the first one moves torch, which is what it's called, which is actually just these. So what I've got is I've got an inverted uh, power source here. And simply when the game is ready to trigger, that torch is removed, which therefore powers these three torches, which will then power the powered rails, which these llamas sit on here. And when you have a minecart up against a block with a powered rail and you power it, it automatically triggers it and sends it down the track. Yes. Just like that. So once that first chain is triggered then, and it's set the redstone block over here looking for the winner. So there are two sort of stages to it. So the first one is there's actually a delay between this last one here, which says end game. So this is waiting 120 ticks. This is because by this time, all of the llamas should have made it to the other end, and it will trigger this second long one. First one is this one, which is looking for the winner. So what happens is, is that, I think it was this one here. Enable finish, yep. Yeah. Uh, this command block here powers this look for winner block. And essentially what this is simply doing is, is it's saying execute for any type llama that sits within the area up here. Now that is just basically the last block at the end of the track. And it says that any llama that enters it will be tagged as the winner. And then once a winner has been tagged, it will immediately depower itself so that it won't add it to any other llama. Then a few seconds later, once the very last block kicks in over there, we're basically assuming that a winner will already be picked by the time the 120 ticks are up. So at that point, it will set another redstone block here which the first thing it'll do was remove it with this. And then it will go to see who it is that's actually been tagged. So in this case, then we're saying that if an entity has the tag of LR winner and their name is Blue Llama, then it is setting the, the dummy winner to the value of one. And it does this for each one. These are all unconditional always active. So this one's for red and this one is for green. The next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to see whether or not the llama that came in was the same choice that the player made. So in this instance, we're simply doing an operation where we are taking the player choice and we are minusing off the number of the winner. Now, the idea is, is that if the player and the winner have the same number, the result comes back as zero. If it is less than zero or greater than zero, then the player lost. So the first thing it does is that any player that ended up with the value of zero is the winner, and therefore they are notified and told that they win 20 tokens. And this one, which is conditional, which will only run for or for if the actual previous one ran, and this is adding the actual tokens to that player. And then the final ones is simply the sorry you lost message. So anyone who didn't get a score of zero will get the sorry your llama did not win message. Now this is for one or above, and I've got exactly the same thing again for minus one or below. So once we've determined the winner and they've all been paid off, it's time to reset the game back. So the first thing it'll do is, is that it will remove all the players from the scoreboard using the reset command. The next thing it does is it resets the winner back to zero, and then it will remove the winner tag from the llamas 
And then this will reset the redstone torch, which is this one over here. In fact, you can see it's missing at the moment, and boom, there you go. There it's come back. And that will then depower this and prevent the llamas from leaving when they get pushed back. As well as removing that torch, uh, reset the start, that's placing the torch, and then send home, which is essentially the same thing on the opposite side, where it removes this torch and it powers the rails here, which then sends the llama back home. And that simply puts the torch back down again so that it becomes unpowered again. And then the final elements are simply just resetting the last elements of the game. So we are setting the bookie back into his position, ready for him to take bets again. And then we are simply displaying a message to the player, telling them to try again. And then the last thing we do is we remove the tag from all the players. So if they don't play again a second time, they won't see any more on-screen notifications. And then this restarts the game again by placing a redstone block here. Now, at the moment, this is in a continuous loop. So once the game ends, it will set reset the redstone block back to here again, and the game will keep repeating over and over and over, and it'll keep following those same steps. Now, if you want to stop the game in any way, all you need to do is go to this very last one where it says restart game, just chain this to needs redstone or something like that, and then this actual command block will not trigger it at all, and therefore the game will end completely. So if you need to make changes to it once you've triggered it, just simply change the condition of that last one over there, and the game won't restart. And that's it. That's how we set up Llama Racing. As you can see, with the command blocks, 59 command blocks is actually really, really simple to make. It seems more difficult than what it was. Uh, I know when I was first tinkering around with it, I was trying to think of what, what was the best way to do it. And this, this really was the best way to do it that I could find. It's quick, simple and easy and it's efficient. It works all the time. I haven't seen any problems with it. I've had people and some friends over playing on, on this map for a bit making choices and, and basically just testing the game out and uh, it didn't run into any faults whatsoever so I'm really really pleased with it. Well thank you very much for watching the video and sticking around to the end. Appreciate it very very much. Please remember to like and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, bye!